Welcome everyone to today's webinar. We're glad that you could join us. Today's topic is financial fitness for farmers. This is part three of a four part series. If this is the first, the first of the four parts that you're joining us for, we do have recordings of part one and part two on the Cultivating Success website. And at the end of the webinar, I will show you where to find those. Cultivating Success is a partnership of University of Idaho Extension, the Small Acreage Farming Nonprofit Organization Rural Roots, Washington State University Food Systems Program, and this Financial Fitness for Farmers series is also a partnership with the Western SARE Program. Today's presenter is Kate Painter. Kate is an ag economist and the Extension Director up in Boundary County. She's located in Bonners Ferry. I'm Colette De Phelps. I'm your facilitator. I'm an area educator with University of Idaho Extension in Community Food Systems, and I am located on the Moscow campus. A couple of quick webinar tips. If you're having any problems with your internet connection, you can always close the other programs that are running on your computer to dedicate your bandwidth to this webinar. If you have problems with your sound, there is a call-in number that is provided in your welcome email. If you decide to call in, please mute your computer so you don't get feedback. At any time, you can type in questions for Kate in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen or you can type in requests for technical assistance in that box. I will be monitoring it throughout the webinar. I have emailed you a selection of handouts that are supporting today's webinar, including a handout that includes all of the webinar slides. If you have um, any opportunity to download those on your computer, they might be helpful for you to open during the webinar. However, they are available as follow-up. As I mentioned, we have recordings of the webinars that will be on our website, and those handouts will be available through the website as well. With that, I am going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen to allow Kate to share hers, and we will get the content of the webinar going. Hello. All right. This we can we can see your screen, Kate, so you're good to go. Hi everybody, and I'm Kate Painter. I had a sheep farm for 25 years, and so I'm using my sheep farm as an example, and um, I'm going to talk about enterprise budgeting. Um, this is an area that I have spent decades working on, and so I, I really I really love them. It's great story problems and trying to take a, a, um, a real life example and do an economic budget is uh, one of my favorite things. So if you have any questions or need resources, I, I would love to help you. So I um, am gonna talk about enterprise budgeting. And uh, I wanna just make, the, make it clear that a budget is a projection. It's your best estimate. Um, when they say a statement, that is more like what happened last year. It's history. But we're going to talk about the art and science of budgeting. Basically, you're going to try to figure something out by doing research, by doing, uh, taking good records, um, looking around, doing some projections, and you're going to try to um, estimate your costs, your returns, your profitability, your feasibility, and impacts of changes. So you can see it's really useful. Um, so the primary purpose of enterprise budgets is to provide estimates of potential revenue, which means your income. And it could be cash, it could be non-cash revenue. We'll talk about all this in more detail. Um, and then expenses, both cash and non-cash. And then the difference between the two is going to be profit. Revenue minus expenses is equal to profit. Sometimes they say net revenue, and basically that means net of all the expenses. So after all the expenses. And you've probably heard a bunch of lingo like net returns to land. 
that means they didn't put a value, an expense in there for land. So that's what's left over to pay for the land cost. So anything you've left out is net returns too. Okay, let's talk for a minute about what is an enterprise. It could be a particular crop, a type of livestock, a particular method or technology for raising crops or livestock. So maybe you're gonna look at doing something a little differently than what you have been. It might be a unique region or, or approach for doing something or a particular level of production. In this example, I'm doing 30 heads, 30 head, so 30 ewes or mother sheep, and there it's a hand spinning flock. Um, so if you do separate enterprise budgets, you can put them all together to get an idea of your whole farm plan. For example, you may want to have a separate one for your hay, if you raise your own hay, um, and then a separate one for sheep. And the two together would give you a good idea if that's um, what you do on your farm, putting those two enterprises together. And teasing them apart will give you more information. Um, they can be very data intensive, but once you've constructed them, they could be used for many purposes. One of the best uses is something called sensitivity analysis. There's a lot of lingo here, but basically it just means what happens when something changes? How sensitive are my results to the various assumptions I've made? We'll do a little bit of that at the end, like what happens to my budget if the price of hay is much higher would be a good example of a sensitivity analysis. Uh, another thing that's really useful is to do an enterprise budget if you're trying to negotiate a lease. And you can show people how much productivity and profit you can be expected from a piece of land so it's easier to come up with some sort of fair market value for renting it. Um, also, if you want, if you need a loan, it's a really good idea to have worked out all your estimates on paper so you can share those with a banker and, and show that you are, you know, anticipating profit and, and that you're not maybe underestimating your costs or forgetting something. So they often do require enterprise budgets for loans. Another use that hopefully you won't have to use them for, but um, sometimes there are lawsuits, like they, or, or, or maybe even just, um, so much has been done on your farm and now you need to liquidate it or something. But it is always good to be able to figure out how much it's cost you to date or for a particular thing. Okay, there's a standard format. Usually the budgets have the revenue on the top and then they have variable costs, which are also called operating costs or direct costs or cash costs and uh, fixed or ownership costs come next. And then at the bottom is the difference. Returns to whatever's left out of the analysis. If we say returns to management, the only thing we haven't put in there is some sort of um, price for the manager. And that way it's basically profit to the manager. Okay, so it's a lot easier to think about all these terms um, if you look at an example. So here is my example of my sheep farm and the gross receipts is the revenue. So I've got um, selling fat lambs, uh, 120 pounds each estimated and 40 of those out of 30 ewes is a conservative estimate. And I'm guessing $1.25 a pound for $6,000. Of revenue. And then I'm going to sell six coal ewes and I'm estimating those weigh 160 pounds here and that they will be worth 31 cents a pound at the market. You multiply 160 by 6 by 0.31 and you get about $300. So the total revenue is $8,223. I've just kind of done some abbreviated um, items here in the operating costs. Uh, these are hay, feed is a very large component of the expenses, and there's a bunch more we'll look at in a minute. But those are your operating costs. Those will go up and down depending on how many sheep you have. 
Um, and then you can look at, well, what are your returns after paying your operating costs? And boy, you really want to be able to have show that you have income above operating costs because if you don't, then it doesn't even make sense to operate your farm if you're not covering those direct expenses like feed. Um, and if you can figure this out, then you're, you're going to have to maybe go back to the drawing board, do something different. Then there are some other costs that are ownership or fixed or whatever um, costs. Whoops, sorry. And um, in this case, it has to do with the value of um, the capital that you've sunk into your farm, as well as some depreciation. And I'm introducing a new term called capital recovery. And that includes both depreciation on your investment and uh, interest on the capital that's invested. That's often done in one kind of complex financial formula. Um, so I, I just want you to be familiar with that, but it's basically depreciation and interest on your investment. Um, and then uh, another term that you might see is interest on retained livestock. And that would be like your breeding ewes. So you've got money invested in those animals that are have more than a one year life. So in this case, you have a value of $2,300 of your herd and your 4% return on, the, on your investment. So at 0.04 or 4%, that ownership cost is $83. Um, in this case, there's also some taxes and insurance that you'd have to pay regardless of what you did. Those are $148. And then another term that is often talked about is overhead. So say you have an, an accountant, you have some other utility fees that you're going to have to pay regardless, and you want to put $100 there. So those are not so directly related to your yearly operation, but they can be quite large too. In this case, they're almost $3,000. So um, when you add up both the variable or operating costs and the ownership costs, your total costs are $6,307. Then your net is $1,915. <clears throat> so your enterprise budget will give you your cost of production for your basic straightforward things seed, fertilizer, pesticide, in this case of the sheep operation, feed, um, cost of operating your machinery, gas, repairs, your labor costs, your land costs, <clears throat> and then you're going to have to figure out your expected yields with your best guess, and then you may want to do some research on your expected prices. And if you have any selling expenses, you want to make sure that you're accounting for those as well. And you put this all together and you should get your net return, some sort of estimate of future profitability. To do a good job of determining your costs, you really need a comprehensive list of what you do. And it's best, we talked about this briefly, uh, last time, if you can keep a log, a journal, something of what you do, when, with what, with any kind of receipts so that you have all the data you need when you want to do something with them. So if you can have even some sort of um, log book where you put the date, what you used, how much, if you've got cost per acre or cost per head or cost per greenhouse, whatever you're doing, what kind of machinery you used, um, speed in miles per hour or acres per hour if, you, if you're doing something. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit uh, later, but we do have some software that can calculate out fuel usage and time it takes to do things if you can track uh, your speed. Uh, you want to think about what it costs you on a yearly basis for repairing. And while that can really differ from year to year, it's nice if you can average that and have many years to look at. Mm -hmm. There's always surprises, but it's best if you can do a good job of estimating. 
Um, another thing that you would need to know to look at fixed cost of ownership is some idea of the current market value of your machinery. Again, we'll talk about that a little bit later. And uh, also, how long will you be using it? So we talked about these already a little bit, but I want to uh, reiterate the cost categories, variable or operating cost. These vary by the type of crop grown and, and your level of, you know, if you're doing a lot or a little, they're going to be bigger or smaller. Fixed costs or ownership costs, those happen whether or not you grow a crop, such as land costs, taxes, machinery fixed costs, such as insurance, housing for your machinery, taxes, depreciation, interest. <clears throat> And then a third category that we use in economic budgets called opportunity costs. And the reason we, we use these opportunity costs is we want to get at, is there an economic return after we have accounted for everything? So you may leave out land rent because you own your land, but there is an alternative. You could rent it out and you should be able to pay yourself land rent. If you're profitable and sustainable, you're gonna be able to have a fair market return for all your factors of production. Um, so we wanna think about what is my time worth? What is my land worth? Um, and, and put a value on all of that. And that way you can get a real fair bottom line. And you may well be able to do it for less than your economic budget states and you may want to convert your economic budget to a cash budget but i'm getting ahead of myself now economic versus cash budgets um, we have the distinction that economic budgets include opportunity costs in which you're going to think about what is the the value of the next best alternative um, right now, interest rates are quite low. If you put money in the savings account, there's very little return. But there have been times where the market returns have been quite a bit more. So there is some value to your, your, your capital. Um, if you're doing an economic budget, like I already said, you want to have at least some type, sort of placeholder for land rent. If you weren't farming, you could rent your land. You do want to include the cost of your labor. It may get old after trying to work without paying yourself. We, we always talk about that. You should try to uh, uh, try to pay yourself. You could always work elsewhere. If you choose to do your use your free time to work on your business, I mean that's fine. But it's a good idea to actually know how much time you're spending. <clears throat> And then the other thing is, is that you are investing your capital into your business and there are other alternatives for that. So some idea of um, the capital that you have invested and you can put whatever interest rate you want, whatever is worth to you, maybe it's only worth two or 3%. It's still uh, an exercise that you might want to do if you're doing an economic budget. Okay. So, it will give you a good idea if you're getting a fair market return for all your factors of production, which is kind of a wordy way of saying that you're economically sustainable. Your returns are positive, the operation is profitable, and you are earning returns to risk and management. Especially if you want to get other people to invest in your business or you want to sell it, um, it's, it's really important that you can show that it is profitable. If on the other hand, that returns are negative, you might wanna start thinking about, is this really the best use of my time and money? It's, it's a really sad thing that so many small farms and businesses do fail and people lose that investment, their time, their money. But we all know that uh, profits go up and down, especially something like farming, you kind of have to be in it for the long term. If you decide this year isn't good, I want out, you're probably not going to get um, good money for everything that you've invested in. It. It's, it's hard to get good money on used equipment, especially if you're in a hurry. 
Okay, on the other hand, a cash budget is simpler. It's going to use your actual outlays for labor, land, machinery. You might want to put your actual, um, if you've got payments that you make each year, a cash budget would use your loan payment for your machinery. Um, it's nice because straightforward and it's got a lot of uses if you're doing cash flow statements, for example, which we're going to work on next week. Um, however, it's not really going to tell you how you're doing in the long run. Um, is this the best place to put your assets? Um, is this the most profitable alternative? Okay, so um, looking a little more detail in, in, at the uh, operating costs, for the sheep farm, we've got feed, we've got some costs for um, pasture in the and the term is AUM, animal unit months. So I'm going to need six months with 25 head, it says here, um, and that would be $150 total or $5 per head. Looks like I should probably have had a, I'll say, okay, it's, it's six months, six AUMs at $25 per AUM. That total value is 150. You divide that by 30 head and you come out to $5 a head. So um, it takes a little skill to read these and understand them. I slipped up there a little. But let's look at marketing. And in this case, we have 40 lambs and we may have to pay $4 a head to go through a particular livestock market. That would be $160 total or $5.33 per U because we're dividing all of these things by a 30 head operation to find out what it costs per head of our breeding stock. So again, there's a little bit of um, learning what's going on. The unit for this budget is a 30 head sheep operation, assuming they have 40 lambs. So we have shearing for the ewe, that's straightforward, 30 ewes at 425, that's 425 per head. But here's another weird one. So in this operation, we have just one ram and uh, it costs 850, it's double to share these rams. And if you figure that out on a per head basis, a 30 head basis, it's 28 cents per you. So it, it's, a, it's a bit of a weird construct, but it basically tells you how much each you is making you on the farm. You could just look at the total value and think about your whole farm, but uh, it, it may be worth it to think about it on a per head basis. And we do the same thing with some of these other operating costs. Uh, veterin veterinary medicine, $250 we spend per year, per year, which ends up being about $8 per U per head. Um, and some of these other costs, machinery, vehicles, equipment, if we divide them by 30, we get about how much it costs per U or we can look at the total value. In this budget, we're assuming we have a hired labor for 40 hours at $15 per hour, which ends up being $600 over the whole ranch or $20 per U. And the owner labor, it's not being accounted for. There is no value there. We'll play with that a little bit later. Interest on operating capital, uh, if you assume that you're going to borrow the money to operate your sheep farm, which is about going to take you about $3,200, and that the money is worth 5%, it would cost you $5 per head or $152 over the whole ranch to pay the interest on an operating loan to do this. Um, whether or not you use an operating loan or whether you're just using your own money, you're still using money that could have been used elsewhere. So it could be an operating, it could be an opportunity cost or it could be an actual cost or some combination of the two. But um, in an economic budget, we are going to look at the value of the cost of capital investment. Save your questions or if you have any questions that you want to ask, be sure to put them in the chat box.
Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about fixed or ownership costs. You might, I hope you're enjoying, enjoying the photos. They're from the Old Time Harvest Festival at the Whitman County Fair where they use the old machinery to harvest. It's on Labor Day each year. Okay, so this is the ownership cost for my sheep farm. And this is probably one of the hardest areas of a budget of a, to, to figure out how to do. It's also going to vary quite a lot from farm to farm. In this case, the capital recovery is a, it's kind of a, in some ways it's kind of an easy way to do it. Um, so in this case, we have $400 worth of purchased livestock. And it says the capital recovery cost is $13.35 per year. The capital recovery takes into account how many years you're spreading it over, the investment over, and the interest rate that you choose. And um, basically, it, it, it creates this factor that tells you what would be, that is some, com if it's some combination of your number of years and your interest rate, and you multiply that by uh, the difference between the purchase price and the salvage, salvage value of your investment. And then you also multiply that by the interest rate uh, it's probably more detailed than you want, and a lot of there's automatic things that will do it for you, but it will give you an idea of your fixed costs, depreciation and interest on an investment. Um, interest on retained livestock, that is really straightforward. It says we have $2,300 worth of breeding livestock, and we're choosing a 4% return on our investment. It ends up being $83. We saw this before, or $278 per head. Okay, so um, the capital recovery cost is basically, uh, it looks at your how to recover the initial invested capital from an investment over the course of that lifespan. Um, and if you do want to do it, I have it in many budgets where you have some idea of your initial cost, your salvage value, your time frame your interest rate and you multiply it by a capital recovery factor and get an annualized value of that investment. Okay, that's probably more than you wanted to know about fixed costs, but at least you know some of the vocabulary and what you might expect to see. Uh, another thing that can be very expensive is the cost, cost of machinery operation, depending on your type of farm. Even if it's just a little bit of machinery, it can be a large cost. And so you may want to give a, some time to figuring out how much your machinery is costing you. It will also help you determine what you can afford to buy. That's probably even more important. Often we have to decide between leasing or buying something, and it's hard to make those decisions. If you're going to use some of these um, tools that we have, software tools that help you figure out your per hour, per acre, or annual costs, you're going to have to gather some data. Uh, purchase price or current market value, what it might be worth when you're done using it and how many years you're going to use it for, for your ownership period, how much you're going to use it per year, what you think you might have to allocate for repair costs, some idea of the average speed. Um, if you can find it, fuel usage and type of fuel, we can also calculate that based on horsepower. Um, and then we have some formulas that have been used for a long time based on really good information that uh, <clears throat> tell you what you should allocate for some other things like taxes, housing, insurance, and licensing, license costs as a percent of average investment. <clears throat> Another thing is labor. So if you're running machinery, obviously you're going to have some labor costs for doing that. And often your labor costs are a lot higher than just those hours that you're running the machinery because you also have to maintain it and maybe move it around. So if you really like this topic, we do have some good website resources. The one I usually use is the University of Idaho Crop Machinery Cost Calculator. You can download that, um, but there are other ones out there. And those data that I just went through, 
that's kind of information you'll need to put those in into our calculators. So you may think, oh, I don't want to go to that bother, but, uh, and, and why should you do that? Well, for one thing, machinery can be quite expensive. Pickups, cars, they're expensive. And every time you use them, it costs you something. You may want to figure out your annual costs of using a particular piece of machinery on your farm. You're wearing it out, you're using it up. Maybe you're only using it a proportion of the time. Maybe most of the time you're using your vehicle for your personal uses, but you're using some of it for business. That's a very important um, thing to track for taxes, for example. It could really help you uh, reduce your taxable income. So not a bad thing to look into. Uh, another thing that uh, doing some machinery depreciation calculations do is it helps you figure out um, how much does it cost me per year to run that piece of machinery, and can you afford to get a nicer piece of machinery? If you're contemplating a choice, you might want to think about, can I cover the cost of a different piece of machinery? And then we always know that machinery isn't completely reliable, and sometimes we, we're going to have to be figuring out how repair costs or unexpected um, <clears throat> things happen to machinery. How do we, how do we figure that out? And, how do we cover that? So it's good to underestimate your costs due to this uncertainty. And, and just being aware of these things will help you figure out what is the right kind of machinery for your farm, what can you afford. <clears throat> and just a reminder, you really don't know how much a machine costs. It's going to cost you until it's passed because there's too many uncertainties. Okay, so lots of moving parts. <clears throat> and you can always start simple, and as you get more information, put more detail in your enterprise budget. Um, in this case, we've got our gross receipts. Uh, this one's got a little more detail here with our fat lambs, our coal ewes, our coal rams, our coal replacement ewes, and fleeces, and we get out a total Revenue for the farm, $82.23, or $274 per U. <clears throat> we get our total operating costs, our income above operating costs, our total ownership costs, and then our total costs. Finally, the bottom line of $67.86 per head, <clears throat> or $2,000 for the whole farm. I think these numbers are jump around a little bit as I keep updating them, but uh, that's the beauty of an enterprise budget is that you can easily change them. I did include some exercises that we could go through, just look at the budget a little bit, but before that, are there any questions? <laughs> We haven't had any questions that came in, Kate, so I'm going to encourage anybody that's on the webinar today, if you do have a question, go ahead and type that into the question and answer box. And in the meantime, Kate, perhaps we can just start going through your examples. Okay. Is it okay if I scoot out to my spreadsheet? Yes, absolutely. Okay. All righty. So here is the spreadsheet, <clears throat> and the one that I sent you. Oh, I, I don't, we don't see this oh, spreadsheet okay. yet, so you might have to fully stop the share and then reshare the spreadsheet. Great, we see your spreadsheet now. <clears throat> okay, thanks. All right, so I had a few questions that I thought I'll show you how easy it is to make changes. <clears throat> Sometimes when I'm doing these, I will stick my prices on a different tab. You can see in the bottom left, I have an input prices tab. <clears throat> when I push that, you should be able to see that now. I've gathered out some of the more important parameters like um, hay prices, labor, then when I update these from year to year, all I have to do is change them here. And if I have a lot of different options or different enterprise budgets, it'll 
put those in there for me. In this case, we just have one, so that's not necessary. But um, <clears throat> let's just do one this way. The first question um, I had on our little exercise said, you think alfalfa is going to be more like $150 this year? So we're changing that. And we come here and we just changed alfalfa price to 150. Now our income above operating costs, because that's such an important category, has gone down to $50. And um, hmm, doesn't look quite right. But uh, income above operating costs is $50. It looks like there's a little mistake here, of course, because I'm presenting this. Uh, live, but um, you do have to go through and make sure everything's adding up right, but that looks like it would bring it down to a pretty unfavorable um, returns to land risk and management. So uh, you can play with this, make sure you've got all your all your formulas and your math going in here correctly. Um, once you get it all proofed, then it's going to be able to tell you a lot. Uh, what if you decide that hired labor is not going to be available for ten dollars so you can whoops i put 150 but see how easy that is to change and then that changes your income above operating cost to 48 dollars um, another thing i said was well what if you decide you really spend an hour a day thinking and managing and working on your on your sheep farm, sometimes you spend way more than an hour a day, but you want to, you would really like to get returns for 365 hours on your farm at $20 an hour. Well, that doesn't work. Your income above operating costs would be negative at that point. You'd have absolutely nothing left to pay ownership costs. So um, sadly, that is not viable at this time. So um, you really couldn't take $7,300 out of the operation for your own labor. So you, it would be good to know that before you started doing it. <clears throat> anyway, I just encourage people to start simple and small, writing down costs, and you may get more information and some more skills at figuring out what you want in terms of um, covering variable costs, putting something towards your ownership costs, and still coming out with a positive number at the bottom line. Um, in this case, we don't have a positive bottom line. And um, that way, sometimes people make decisions like, well, if I just had 10 more sheep, that would make me finally profitable. It would bring the revenue up. Well, that depends. If your biggest expense is feed, um, then increasing the number of animals eating it is probably not going to work too well. So um, again, work it out on paper. Maybe you really got to work on marketing and sell those animals for more money or sell your fleece for more money. Find some alternative, maybe wholesale ways to feed your animals. It'll just really help you um, manage your farm better if you have a good idea of what your outlays and potential revenue is. Are there any, are there any questions? We haven't had any questions come in. Well, we have a few more slides in the PowerPoint. Should I switch back there? Sure, that would be great. I just wanted to tell you about a farm business management and benchmarking grant that one of my colleagues at the University of Idaho um, has headed up. 
and it is a program to help you calculate your farm financial records and participate in a, in a program uh, that will help you uh, learn to do this. You have to gather all your data and we do have some uh, people that are helping you calculate your financial forms. It's mainly for folks in Idaho, but we can also help people in, in Washington. I talked to Ashley about that this week. If you're interested in that, you need to Google Idaho Ag Biz. I'll show you the link as well, and it tells you more about the program and how to sign up. So yeah, free one-on-one -on -one assistance to create and analyze balance sheets, income statements, cash flows, and budgets. Free access and training on FinPAC, which is a financial management software that's been around for decades and decades. It's very good. And it will also um, satisfy Farm Service Agency beginning borrower training requirements. What you have to provide is farm financial statements, beginning and ending balance statements, like we've talked about in the first class, income statements, we talked about in the second class, um, all past year's expenditures and incomes, so that would be your enterprise budget, like we talked about today. And then um, you can, you'll get help with the whole farm financial analysis, a free trial of FinPAC with training, and assistance compiling statements if desired. And these are open to any farm of any size. Uh, in exchange, you share your data, which is made anonymous. So you can either search for Idaho Ag Biz and see the link on how to sign up or use this link. Colette, do you want to talk about our other programs? Yes, um, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay, great. So now you'll see the Cultivating Success Small Farm uh, website. And as I mentioned, here is where you'll go to find the recorded webinars, which are this light blue button. Also, I wanted to point out that we have added a new button that links you directly to University of Idaho's um, extension publications. And that's a really great resource on a variety of topics related to small acreage farming and ranching. We do have one more webinar in this series, and that's next Tuesday. As Kate mentioned, we'll be talking about cash flow statements. If you're not already registered, you can register through the Cultivating Success website. And we'd really appreciate your taking some time to complete our post-webinar survey. This is going to launch in this webinar. You also have this link in the handout that I provided to you via email. One of the things that is in that survey is an opportunity for you to tell us whatever what other topics you would like to have covered in our webinar series. And this is definitely something that we are going to be looking at in, in providing increased online support during the time where many of us are being uh, socially isolated due to the coronavirus. So if there are some topics that would be really helpful to you over the next few months, please make sure you put those within that part of your survey. With that, I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much, Kate, for your presentation. I'll also remind folks that you can view this webinar as you go through the exercises that we sent out by email. If you have any specific questions, you can contact Kate at kpainter at uidaho.edu or email myself and I can get those questions to Kate. So thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you.